So what I want to do tonight, hi Evelyn. Hi. Um, is I want to go over the final so that you can go ahead and get started if you want to get it done. And then you'll be all done before Thanksgiving. Uh, I think what I want to make sure we understand is the final is a way for you to demonstrate a structure that you have built. We do not expect you to have in this structure kids or anything else. What we expect to see is a frame that it's based upon the Quality Matters rubric where you will demonstrate where you have the various uh, parts of the rubric that you have. Sorry, I'm trying to clean up my downloads here. So let me make sure we, we see this. So if I go into Schoology, what I'm going to see in Schoology, and let me find a class that uh, is actually working out there. Okay. And so what we see here is a class that's out at JTAM. And as you can see, the person who has created this has all the structures in place that they need to then be able to look at it through the lens of quality matters. You don't need to have eight individual pieces in here that then would be reflected in the Quality Matters rubric. Things can be collapsed. If you look down here at Instructional Materials, um, well, they didn't put much in here. This is from last year. But this is where your things would go. This is where your assignments would go. Here's where your quizzes would go. Let's see if I can find a better one. Here we go. This is the one I wanted to see. Right. This is at Seneca High School. This is actually working right now. This is a real teacher doing things. And as you can see, she has very clear what she's doing. Here's her syllabus. Here's her assignment. And so on. It just It's so easy for kids to work their way down through this. <laughs> Not anything fancy, fancy, uh, but it certainly covers what she wants to do with it. If you look here, when you click on where it says click here first, the first thing you do is you will see a video of her, and there's the teacher, introducing the kids to her class. She uses that kind of multimedia further down here. Uh, with a video I see here about what is Prime. She has lots of links. She has a clearly organized assignment. <clears throat> now, could we say to her, why don't you have a folder called Assignments? Why don't you have a folder called um, Multimedia Videos? So on. Well, when I asked her that question, her response to me was, I wanted it to be as sequential, as linear as possible, so kids would not get lost. Can't argue with it. So this would be a really nice example of a structure that someone has created to use in Schoology. Now, let me pop back here and show you a couple of things. Under course modules, we're at the end. And what I've tried to do here in this hallmark assessment 
is I've tried to give you multiple ways of doing this. And we'll look at this inside of uh, Live Text here in just a minute. If you do not have a Live Text account, if this is like your first course you've taken or your second course, what I've done is in here, I have put a link down here at the bottom that will open up a Word document that you can use to fill in your Quality Matters rubric. So let me open that up. This same document is sitting inside of Live Text. I would counsel that you take a look at using these documents, either one, as opposed to trying to put your information in inside of the Live Text. Um, let me pop over and show you what that looks like. So in our live text, here it is. Uh, this is your template. And when you open it, what it does is it has a place down here where you basically can do the same thing. You hit the pencil, the edit button, and then all of this becomes an editable document. You can go in here and type in your reflections. Um, and of course, the important piece is right over here. You're going to be putting in your scores. Well, I just don't find that this works well. And so, again, what I've done is I have put in here this attachment, which is exactly the same as the one that I was just showing you. So you can do this outside of the live text and then just upload it as an attachment. The only thing that I'm asking you to make sure that you do is you need to make sure that you place the access code of your Google Classroom or your Schoology site here. In other words, I need that code right here so that I can get into whatever you've created. Okay? And if you'll remember, and I'll, I'll make sure we look at this uh, over here in Schoology, I mean in Google Classroom as well. You can locate that code either here in the members section. You see she has a whole bunch of members. Okay? Or it's located up here in the, the corner about your class. Okay? But I need to have that so that I can get into your stuff and take a look at it. Okay? I need to be able to see what it is that you're doing and then, of course, look at it. Now, what you're going to do is simple. I mean, it's really simple. You're going to go in, you're going to bring up the document, <coughs> and you're going to score yourself. So this is the point that Quality Matters thinks you ought to have. You're going to look at direct, uh, instructions to make clear how to get started and where to find various course components. You'll come over here, and if you think you've done that that is a very important part of your course, give yourself a three. And all the way down, in the reflection, this is where you can tell me why you think this works the, the way it does. Okay? Notice there's not a whole lot of room here. So I'm not looking for a great deal of writing, writing, writing. What I'm looking for is for you to grade yourself. And although you can't see it on this document, there is room over here for me to actually put in my scores as well. So I'll be coming in behind you once you upload this. And I'll be putting in what I see when I look at your scores, when I look at your uh, site. Remember, you're basically, this can all be done in one place, right? This could be done in one listing, one item. 
could be a video to upload and explain everything. And that's it. That's one. Two could be a folder called learning objectives. And we did that in um, Schoology. When we did it in Google Classroom, we kind of realized we had to do it through the use of topics. Uh, there wasn't a way to create a separate folder or any of that. And that's fine. But again, this can all be done in just one location. What kind of assessment would you use? Put an example in there. It can be one that you make inside of Schoology, or it could be a link to one that you've made inside of Edpuzzle, or it could be one that is, it could be the assessment tool that's inside of Google Classroom, where you can put questions in. Instructional materials, um, again, Schoology has sort of a distinct advantage here, because you can literally have a folder called instructional materials. And you can look at what this is looking for. What it's basically looking for is, A, do you have something? And is it pertinent to what you're trying to do in the course? That's all. Learning activities. This could be anything from an assignment, which both sites do, to a discussion board, which both sites do. Okay. It could be a link that would take a student to uh, an outside web resource that a student could create in, <coughs> excuse me, and then bring back and put in. You don't have to go crazy with this. A good discussion forum pretty well takes care of it. You got the course technology. Do things work is pretty much what you're looking for here. And do we have ready access to any technologies that the kids need to use? In other words, there's a link that takes you from a folder or an assignment that would take them somewhere else. Does the assessment piece work? All that it comes under course technology. Does your video that you put in here work? Learner support. Do we see that what you've created in here helps kids understand what you're trying to do. Now, seven, frankly, is kind of hard. Because seven, really what you could do is, if you have done this, number two, learning objectives, you've done seven. Seven is kind of a, related to a university and whether or not that this course material uh, matches up with what a university's uh, uh, requirements might be. But for us, for our purposes, learner support, we can equate with learning objectives. So you've done it. You've done do. And then accessibility. The course, requ uh, the course contains equivalent alternatives, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, using Good design means that things are easily understood. Look at how uh, the class from Seneca was set up. Let's go look at that real fast. Because again, like I said, I asked the teacher why she had it set this way. And she told me this was done the way it is to allow students to see a flow. You can see she's got assignments one through six. And then she's got all of her stuff. It's done within each one of these links. I don't know what CG, GCF is. Let's, get, let's go see what that might be. OK. So once again, she's given us resources that take us out of and she's got right below it. You didn't get it? Well, here's something else. So she is giving her kids multiple opportunities to see what it is she's trying to teach to them in multiple ways. Let's see what this next one says, or does.
I don't know why it's not loading. But I think I know what it was. And I think she took it down because she found that the kids got it. They didn't need to have any other help. Okay. So this is a really good example of how you can simply build this. And you don't have to go crazy. Now, if you're like me, I like folders. It just makes sense to me when I create folders. I've got to turn this off. It's going to drive me nuts listening to that video. I like folders. I think it makes more sense. But if I were designing for a class of kids that were struggling with math, the folders, I would bet you, would confuse them. So what you're doing in this final is, is you are justifying what you have created so that we can understand what it is that you're doing. So see, here, here's my way of doing it. But I will bet you that this teacher, who I have a great deal of respect for, she would look at that and she would go, well, first of all, I have no idea when I'm supposed to move from one folder to another folder. And she would be absolutely right. In this structure, the movement is already here. There's your first assignment. Here's a, looks like that's a video as well that backs that up. Here's your second assignment, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Now let's look at Google Classroom. <clears throat> and I feel bad about Google Classroom because, frankly, I know enough about Google Classroom to be dangerous. <laughs> and one of the things that I have really tried to think through when I go into Google Classroom is I'm trying to think of it through the lens of quality matters. I really, really am. And when I do that, my problem is I just don't have enough flexibility in this thing to get me where I want to go. So I would have to, see, look over here. We were playing with this the last time we were together. Okay, so topics are here. So I have a topic called objectives. I have a topic called intro. And I have a topic called assessment. But if you look at it, and I think we talked about this last time, do you notice something? It's not in any order except alphabetical. And kids, I have hunted. I have hunted trying to find a way to change this so that I could have my topics over here in the order that I wish them to be. And of course, that would obviously be intro, objectives, resources, assessment. Now, over here in the stream, they're all here. I mean, everything that we just talked about does exist right here. But it's difficult to build a structure inside of Google Classroom. Now, I can put all kinds of neat things into it. I can put videos into it. Remember we talked about that I said I couldn't find a way to embed, but when I do the link, it works very nicely. Thank you. So I can get stuff in here that allows kids to go in and out. And then, of course, over here with my plus sign, this is where I create the content that goes in there. Announcements can be where you have, like, a page where you're basically just explaining things. Assignments is exactly what it sounds like. Creating a quiz is exactly what it sounds like. That's, that's all the structure I've got to play with. If I were doing this in a school, and I've asked people who do use Google Classroom in their school, and they were saying to me, they said, Steve, you're trying to put it all in at one time. You have to build it as you go along. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I'm not going to beat this horse any more than I've already beat it. 
Uh, it's obvious that, you know, I could do some tricky things. I'll show you what I mean. Let's see if it works. So if I came down here to my topics, and I went to intro, and I renamed it, and if I put a couple of spaces in front of it, Well, it won't let me rename it, though. <laughs> it says, no, Steve, you can't put spaces in front of me. So there you are. I thought I could put a couple of spaces in front of it that would then put at the top of a list, but it doesn't allow me to do that. So let's go back and make sure we understand uh, where we are with this. You are going to want to use either this one or the one that is in the Quality Matters in the live text. Okay. In your hat, don't worry about, well, it basically just says, here's your, oh, by the way, it says uh, Blackboard or Schoology here. Don't worry about that. We know it means classroom. Uh, as you can see, it's basically just saying, hey, you need to have something here for people to do, et cetera, et cetera. That's right out of the QM. This is the important piece. I need to know how to get into your course, okay? And you as the owner of the course are the ones that can get to that. I can't get to them um, unless you give me access to them. Here's the rubric. You do not want to do the rubric inside of live text. It just it doesn't know how to handle the columns and, and all that other stuff. There's the Quality Matters document that you can use. Fill it out and then attach it to your uh, hat. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Of course, as always, I'm available for you to ask questions about. I hope you have found this. Uh, this has been a really interesting class in the sense that we have gone from some way, way back here with a lot of just heavy sort of this is where it started, this is how we do it, so on and so on. You had to take a quiz. Uh, that was hard. You uh, had to look at the foundations of understanding online learning, Terry Anderson's work. Understanding the paradigm shift, the idea this is an enormous paradigm shift from the normal ways that we think of teaching. And unfortunately what's happened with that is we have kind of gotten into a very static mode of using online. I think it should look more like inquiry-based learning. It should look more like instructivist learning. And it should be very much a uh, project-based learning place. We then went hard into, I think, which we would call this the heart and soul of the course. And that is learning about knowledge building principles. Knowledge building principles has nothing to do with quality matters. It has everything to do with thinking about designing for how do you get kids to think and to own their thinking? How do you get kids to articulate their thinking? How do you get kids to articulate to each other about their thinking? Now, we've seen inside the Schoology and even Google Classroom, it's very easy to put something in there like a discussion board, a discussion forum. It's very easy to do. Good. Because now I'm free within those two areas to put directions in there that challenges people to put in their ideas and then read others' ideas and respond to them and then build new ideas. So you see, there's nothing in knowledge building that has any kind of to do with structure except that what you want to do is you want to build your um, site so that constructivism goes on, collaboration can go on, 
the ideas that the person has about what the class is can go on in question. Then what you can see that will happen there is these marvelous, um, let me go jump here, let me jump back in one more time. You can see these marvelous examples of people who have created, I'm trying to find my young lady who's out in Shelby County with her ukulele uh, class. In her ukulele class, the kids uh, were basically putting up their ideas about what they were learning in their class, and then they went and actually began using the ability to put in their own music that they had created. And what was so cool about it was they were then commenting on each other. Now, can you build something like that? Sure you can. And if you think about it, again, here we are. Comment below. How do you feel thus far about math as an online course? She's got 53 comments. I'm not going to go into this because I don't want us to see what she's having kids write about. 53 comments. So there is good participation. What we would hope we would find is the ability for kids then to have conversations with each other within the framework. I don't see that here. So that would be a conversation I would have with this teacher. Um, I think quality matters just makes sense because it gives me a really clear roadmap on how to design stuff. Uh, and again, if you're struggling with how to do this, please go back in and look at these courses that we saw from uh, Jefferson County, Colorado, and go in and look at it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, modeling what you want to create off of somebody else's stuff. And then there was Schoology where we talked about it. I will plead the fifth <laughs> on Google Classroom. As I said, it's not something that I have played enough with to make it clear to me how it can be work within that structure. I will go in here and I will watch these again, especially this one. And this one, because this is the whole tutorial. And that one, and that one. And then here's the complete guide. This is what I've been looking at here lately. I've been digging around in there. Questions that people have asked me, they'll say, so do I create something for each one of these? All you're doing here is you are deciding which one of these you want to own. So if you're going to do it in Schoology, fine. And notice, I've said this many times, all you're doing is you're creating one lesson. If you want to use Google Classroom, you're using one lesson. In your Hallmark, all you're doing is, and it says it right here, or it says Blackboard, this should say Google, I'll put it in there. You are using either Schoology or Blackboard, not both. And you're using the Quality Matters rubric with one. Emphasize, emphasize. All you're doing is you're picking which one of these you want to use, create with one lesson, and then use the Quality Matters rubric to evaluate what you've created. This has been quick. Um, I think this is pretty straightforward, frankly. And what you've done up to this point, where I've gone in and looked at stuff inside of live text, is beautifully done. I think you're going to find that this is not hard to do once you get it straight in your head, what it is that your structure is going to do. In other words, what are you trying to teach? and then decide if you want to do it through a structure of folders 
or if you want to do it through a structure of everything is on one page. And you just have this nice linear sequential. Either one would be acceptable because you're going to justify it and explain it inside of your quality matters rubric. So Evelyn, you're the only one in the room with me. So I'm going to ask you if you have any other questions. No, but I did use Google Classroom to, uh, you know, to create mine. Um, uh, you did use Google Classroom. How did you find it? Did you go through? Did you do a better job than me <laughs> of understanding it? I hope you did. And it's probably what you use at your school. Is that correct? Uh, would you like me to look at it? Let me go back to where I was in the Google. So if I wanted to join your class, I would click on that little plus sign there. And then if you'll give me the code, if you can give me the code, I'll put it in here. And then I'll, uh, I probably won't be able to jump right in. It'll probably just give you a, uh, hey, will you let Steve into your course? And that'll be fine. It's located over there on the left-hand side of your uh, classroom. That is ML ML zero O one one. Nope, that wasn't right. I didn't type it in right. M L zero L one one. Now I just go in here and click on join class. L zero O one All right, let me do it this way. Let's let's just do it this way. Join a Google Classroom. Was trying to do it. I 
you hear me? Well, I better get that figured out. I thought it was just as simple as knowing the code and putting it in right here. What did you call your class? Let's 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 go back to that. Oh, she wants me to try another one. Try. Okay, I'll try that code. Five F six N W P. Five F six N W P. Or was it an S? Tell you what, I'm gonna quit looking at my big screen here in the office and I'm just gonna look down here on my computer screen. I think that was an F Steve. Is that an S for a five? Do you know? Can you tell me? It is a five. All right, five X six. Well, the only thing I can think of is that your school has a unique domain that I'm not allowed into. Um, do you know what your school domain is called? Okay. Do you what's your what is your Google Classroom called? Let's start there. Hmm. Integrated science. Now let's let's try. That's such a broad topic, I'm probably not going to even get close to it. Yeah. Okay. Will you do this for me? Will you find out what the name of your school domain is? It should be something like uh, myschool.google.com, something along those lines. and Or it could be google.myschool.com. Oh, I see that, S-C-H-S. Alrighty, let's try that. No, I did not mean scholar. Okay, let me try it the other way. <laughs> well, is this any of your stuff here, dear? <laughs> B. 
dating a doctor. Let me try that again. <laughs> S-C-H-S dot Google dot com. And that can't be reached. Okay. So let's go back and try the other way. Google dot S-C-H-S dot com. Dot com. Yes, I did. All right, SCHS stands for what? Let me go try that. Shelby County High School, I gather. Spencer County. Okay. Hang on. Let's go try it here. Okay. We can't get well. If I would spell it right, maybe it would uh, work. Okay. What I'm going to ask you to do, a you're going to need to ask someone that you're building who is whoever does your technology in the building. Um, let's just for giggles throw that in, see what happens. When you invited me in, how did you invite me in? Did you send an email to my SBSwan02 account? All right. Let's try sending it to my Gmail account. In other words, my Google account. And that would be steveswan53 at gmail.com. I keep that simple. Steve Swan, Steve, S W A N, 53 at gmail.com.
Okay. Go ahead and try to get that. Uh, I haven't heard of that being in the case, but I also find that a lot of the smaller districts uh, pretty much take their marching orders from Frankfurt, and the Frankfurt basically has all this stuff locked down really tight until it gets its head around what they're doing. Are you all you're in a public school, right? Okay, did you send it to me via my Gmail account? And it did not work. What did it do? It just said you couldn't send it to me? Okay, so you're probably right. So what they've probably done is they've got, because you said you sent it to a teacher's email that works with you, and that went fine because that teacher's email is in the list of things that are allowed to work within your Google domain. I get it. I get it. It's not the end of the world. You're going to do the right thing. You're just going to ask them to, uh, and I would either, uh, if they need the Gmail account, if, if feel free, but if you want to give them the sbswan02 at louisville.edu so they would know that it's a professor at U of L that you're trying to allow in. And that might, uh, you know, allay their fears. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You're using Google, you're using Google Classroom, but Gmail is blocked. That is funny. Okay, dear. I'll uh, look forward to hearing from you, and you know how to reach out to me very easily. Uh, if you would like to come in, if you know, worst comes to worst, you could come in here and just, or you know what else I can do? I didn't even think about this, Evelyn. When you're ready and you want me to see your site, in other words, go through, fill out the, um, fill out the Quality Matters rubric document, and then what we could do is we could meet online, like we are now, and I could turn you in to the moderator, to the collaborator. And then what you would do is you would take over the screen, and you could type in all the information you use to get into your site, and then you could just sit there and show it to me. So if we can't get the other to work, we'll definitely get that to work. Okay? I don't know why I didn't think of that in the first place. It's very easy to do. I turn you into a moderator. You own everything. Okay, dear? So let me uh, send that to find out what's going to happen. And if they, if they can't get it to happen or they won't allow it to happen, then we'll just do it the other way. And then when you're ready to do that with me, just let me know, and then we'll schedule a time to, to meet. Fair enough? Alrighty. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.